What's up? Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall and today we're going to look at creating a radical type logo using Adobe Illustrator 2020. Here's the logo and let's get started, shall we? The first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new document and we are going to have a width of 1000 points along with a height of 1000 points. Once we've created our new document, let's look at our workspace. The first thing we are going to be looking at is the top right hand of our computer screen. We are going to be selecting the essentials layout. Next, let's go to view on the top bar and make sure that smart guides is selected. Once we're done with that, let's select our rectangle tool and we are going to drag from the top left of our document to the bottom right of our document. We're going to change the fill of our document to black and we'll make our stroke transparent. Once we're done with that, with our elements still selected, we are going to go Object, Lock, Selection. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our Type tool. We'll click anywhere on our page and we are going to write slime. Once done, we'll select our type and we'll change our stroke and our fill to white as our fill and our stroke is going to be transparent. Next thing we'll do is we'll size up our type to 250 points. Next on the top bar, We'll select Milkshake as our type. If you don't have Milkshake, visit FontSquirrel.com. It's available there for free download. Let's center this element on the page. The way we're going to do that is we are going to go to our top bar and we are going to select Horizontal Align Center and then Vertical Align Center as well. Next thing we're going to do is we'll select our type select Effect, Warp, and Arc. We'll select our arc and set it to maybe 18%. Click OK. Once done there, we'll select our Rotate tool and rotate it slightly so that our type looks about like that. Notice if you look at our original image, you can see how the type looks like it's sort of falling off or melting to the ground. That's what we're going for with this. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to click directly beneath slime and write industries. We'll select all, change our fill to white, change our stroke to transparent. We'll go to the top bar and select universe condensed medium. This is available for general download almost anywhere. With that in mind, we will size our typeface down to 50 points. We'll select our type menu and we'll select all caps. Next, we'll set the tracking for our piece at 250. Then, using our selection tool, we will drag our type so that it starts directly beneath the L. I think we're pretty close right there. Let's start adding some color and shape to our type. We'll click on Slime, and we'll change our fill to sort of an electric green, something that's really, uh, really loud. I think that's close enough. Looking at this, I want to make my S slightly bigger. So I'll drag over my S and then I will size it up to about 274 points. I think that should do it right there. One more step, since we're not going to be manipulating our type anymore, we'll select it. We'll go to Object and select Expand Appearance. What that does is it changes our type to an editable shape. 
One more thing to do, since this is a single shape now, I want to combine them with everything still selected. I'll select my Pathfinder tool. If you don't see it, select Window and Pathfinder. Select Unite. Next thing you want to do is if you look at our original document, you notice these big, huge drips. I'm going to be adding those starting right now. We are going to bring up our ruler and we'll click on our left edge and drag over to the absolute bottom of our S. That looks good, just about there. We're going to do the same thing for our E. That's close enough right there. We'll add a line for the bottom of our L. That's a good place. Next, we'll do the same thing for our M. Good enough right there. Where we have these lines is where we are going to add the drips. First thing we're going to do is zoom into our S. We'll start here. We'll grab our pen tool. And we'll maybe start right, al right along this edge right here. We'll click and then we'll go to about this far down. That looks like a good distance. And we'll click, hold our shift key and drag down to about there. Next, we'll go to our ruler line. We'll click, we'll hold our shift key and drag horizontally to about like that. Next, we will go back and match up where our first anchor point was set. We'll click and drag, holding our shift key, about the same distance we held it when we dragged down. I think that looks about right, right there. Finally, we'll go over to our right edge and click and drag if needed. Finally, we'll close our shape. We'll zoom out. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to do the same thing with the E. We'll zoom into the E. Click on our select key, click off our element, zoom out, and let's even hide our ruler lines. Look what we've done. This is actually a really, really viable looking logo right now. Let's add a couple more drips and I think we should be all set with our overall shape. Let's go over to the L. We'll zoom into the bottom of the L. I think that's about right. And we'll do the same thing. I'll go over to our M and do the same thing. Once done with our drips, we'll click off our document and take a look at the entire page. We'll also hide our ruler lines. Next step, we'll select industries and bring it forward. We'll do that by clicking on our element. We'll select object, Arrange, bring to front. All right, that's our look so far. Next thing you're going to do is we are going to create an art brush for the highlights that we've got on our piece. The way we do it is we'll click and hold our rectangle tool and select our ellipse tool. Next thing we'll do is we will click and drag a small ellipse underneath our document, underneath our art. We'll zoom in just so we can get a better look at it. Next thing we'll do is we'll select our transparency menu. If you don't see that, you can go to window and select transparency from there, it'll appear. We'll change the transparency to 60%. With our 
oval still selected, we will go to brushes. If you don't see that again, you can go to window, brushes, and select that. Once that's done, we'll click on our menu, select new brush, and we'll click on art brush. We'll name this highlight. And be sure that stretch to fit stroke length is selected and that the width is fixed. Click OK. And notice underneath the brush list now is highlight. Next thing we're going to do is we'll select our pen tool and we'll be sure that our stroke is white and our fill is transparent. We'll zoom in on our piece and we'll start drawing curves around the areas where we want those highlights to appear. Next step is we will show the entire page once again. We'll grab our select tool, drag across all of our elements, hold our shift key down and deselect the pieces that we do not want selected. In particular, anything that is not a stroke. Once that's done, we'll go back to our brushes and we will click on highlights. If we click off of it, you can see what our piece looks like now. Last step is we'll continue with our select tool, drag across our entire element and group everything together. Click off of it and there's your piece. You're all set. So there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like or subscribe to see more videos just like this. We'll see you soon. See you.